Hello everyone, my name is Paulo Alves and today I'm going to show you the creation of my new startup, Slim Canvas, also known as the business model. For those of you who haven't seen my previous video showing the whole idea of the startup, you can click on one of these links here to get to that video and then watch it. But here I'm going to also give you a really brief description of the idea. Households or companies will let NGOs or other companies that work with recycling to know that there is some trash to collect at that place. And well, the creation of this business model took like um, 20 minutes. I know it may sound a bit weird that in order to create the perfect business model it took me only like 20 minutes instead of hours or maybe some days, but there is a reason for that. But first, let's just think about this beautiful phrase was made by one of the biggest philosophers that are still alive nowadays. Everyone has a good plan until they get punched in the face. And what I want to say here is that the perfect business plan doesn't exist. What really exists is actually our studies showing that successful companies changed their initial business model a lot of times and drastically. So let me tell you what actually happens in real life. First, you get that business model, you test it, you execute it on the streets, then you get punched in the face. Then you change your initial business model, you go on the streets, test, execute it, then you get another punch in the face. And then you repeat that process until you are able to skip that punch and maybe punch back. All right, all right, after this passive-aggressive philosophical introduction, let's start creating the business model of my new startup using the Link Canvas. This right here is the Link Canvas business model. This model is adapted to the startup world and it helps us to break the idea in several key points like problem, solution, costs, marketing, how to measure success and advantages. Now let's start putting the idea into the Link Canvas business model using Reciclica, my new startup, as an example. As the most important part to create an idea is to know who is our client and the problem that that client has, let me start by these two segments here. Here in the block of customer segments, I will identify who is my client. In my case, the client consists of companies that benefit from recyclable waste and industries that create products with recycled material. Now that we know who our clients are, let's go a bit deeper on that subject and identify who will be the early adopters of that idea. By early adopters, I mean the clients that need this product the most and will help validate our product. Keep in mind that the success of the product strongly depends on these initial clients. Here I'm going to fill it with recycling companies that already collect trash by other ways like WhatsApp, phone calls, emails, etc. Now that I have defined who are the clients and the early adopters of the idea, let's talk about the problem. I will insert here the two biggest problems that our clients face today. To know where there is recycled material to collect and to have more people donating the trash for recycling. Right below here, there is a section to inform the existing alternatives, which means how these problems are solved nowadays. For the first problem, I will answer WhatsApp messages and for the second problem, advertisement and recycling awareness. So we just described it here, the current reality of our clients, who they are, the problem they have and how they solve this problem. The next part of segments that I will address here will help to define our MVP, the segments of solution, unique value proposition and revenue streams. The MVP, by the way, stands for a minimum viable product and it is the smallest solution you can build, which will still deliver value to the client and if possible, make you get some money. For the solution, I will write list of all the places that exist now to collect the trash and get more people to produce the recyclable waste. Now I'll move to the segment of unique value proposition. This segment should be filled with an offer that would make our client know that our product is the best fit to solve the problem they have right now. We have to think about something that will put together the problem and the solution. One example would be to promise someone who is looking for a job that this person will find a job in 30 days. I will fill this part with know exactly where to collect the recyclable waste as soon as it's ready to be collected in a fast and organized way. Below this we have the high-level concept subsegment. Here we will put one high-level description of what we do. 
For example, the high-level concept of Uber initially was like taxis, but cheaper, easier and safer. I will input here Uber for collecting recyclable waste. Now I will fill the revenue stream segment, which will tell us how our product will produce money. The idea is that our clients will pay us so they can have access to our platform with all our partners and all the trash pickup points. As we already have a client and we have already talked to him about it, we already know what value to put here, which is around 30 cents of euros or dollars per kilo of recyclable waste. Now we move to the channels, which are the possible ways we have to get to our clients. Here I will just put word of mouth and social media for now. Then we'll move to the way we'll measure the success of our idea, which is the key metrics segment. Here we'll know if our startup is growing. What matters here is to know if our clients will see value in our startup. So let's think about it. In our case, to have value to our client, we need to have partners who will let us know that there is recyclable ways to be collected. If we have those partners, it will be much easier to get clients to work with us. Of course, having a lot of clients will also be a key metric. So I will put here plus 50% partners per week, plus 50% clients per month, and recyclable waste per amount of partners equals to 0.3. I will explain that one a bit later. And I will also define our success as increase the amount of recycling in the cities. Now I will define what costs I'm gonna have in order to implement that idea. Here I will insert my fixed and variable costs, things like employees, servers, workplace, and etc. Well, to have an app that works, I will need a server, right? I'll estimate the cost of that server as 10 euros dollars per month, let's say. My friend and I will be the only people working on this project, him as the salesman and me as the developer. I will imagine here we'll get 200 dollars or euros per month with this. Of course, there's no way we are going to have this in the beginning, but I'll put this here so we put some low metric in our lifetime consuming work on this startup. And keep in mind that here no one is trying to get those numbers 100% right, as in this phase of the idea this is a bit hard. So, by knowing our revenue stream and how much we imagine we are going to spend, we can already try to guess our break-even point, which is the point where the money comes and outcomes become equal and you stop wasting money. It's basically when the startup can pay itself. So we just guessed we are going to spend around 410 euros per month. With that number, we can then do some basic math and know that we'll have to collect 1,367 kilos of recyclable waste per month to get to that point. As on average, each person produces one kilo of waste per day, and on average from that one kilo, half of it is recyclable, we will need around 46 kilos of recyclable waste per day, which will take us to the number of around 92 partners Imagine they all live alone. Remember that 0.3 kilos per client per day that I put as a key metric? Well, it is said that on average people produce 0.5 kilos of recyclable waste per day. I just decided to put 0.3 kilos in the beginning of the startup as a goal. Of course, we can change all those numbers later. The last segment we'll talk about is the unfair advantage that only our product has. Here we'll compare ourselves to the other options on the market and how we give to our clients an advantage that none of those options have. Just think about something that cannot be easily bought or copied. The bad news is that we didn't think about anything to put here. The good news is that this is not necessarily bad news as some unfair advantages only reveal themselves after some time. So this blank segment will keep punching us in the face until we come up with something to put there. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to punch in the face that subscribe button that's here under the video if you want to follow the process of creating a real startup from scratch. And also please share this video with your friends who are developers or entrepreneurs and you know they want to get that idea they have on their minds and put it on reality. So see you on the next video.